Welcome to First Lutheran Church in Clifton, New Jersey. I'm Pastor Jeff, and I am so glad that you have joined us for this time of worship. As we continue to uh, worship remotely um, and in our homes, we're, we are assured that Christ unites us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So no matter where you are, we are connected and we are connected with God. We are building our lives first in faith. May God bless us in our time together. Let us begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, We Praise You, O God. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray in unison. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. 
These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have any children here? Come on up. Oh, it's good to see you. I missed you last week. How are you? That's great. Hugs. High five. Oh, so good to see you. You know, this week I had a fantastic week. I spent the week down at the beach with my family. And we had a lot of fun. We got to sit in the sun and we got to go swimming. And I love to ride the waves. And we found some shells like this one. Isn't that great? Yeah, I love to look for shells. Have you ever looked for shells before? Yeah, and you found some different ones? That's great. Yeah, you know, it's really neat when I think about a shell because a shell is one of the oldest symbols of baptism. Whenever we see a shell, it reminds us that we are baptized and that Jesus loves us very much. You know, shells are very different. Every single one looks a little different, but each one can remind us of God's love. You know what? I have an idea. How about if I show you some of the shells that we found? And each time I show you a shell, you can yell, Jesus loves you. Let's try it. Ready? Jesus loves you. 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 You know, all of these shells look different, just like we all look different, different shapes and sizes and colors, but Jesus loves every single one of us. Let's pray that we could remember that. Dear Lord Jesus, you made each one of us special. We are all different, but you love each one of us. Help us to remember that Jesus loves me. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. And you can go back to your seats now. I hope to see you really, really soon. Bye-bye. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Jesus said, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done according to you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. How incredible is that? I mean, it's incredible because God has the power to bring healing and change instantly. But I also find it incredible because it challenges me to be just as faithful as that woman in the reading. And it challenges you to be just as faithful as that woman. Great is your faith. Do you ever wonder what people will say about your faith when you're not around? Do you ever wonder what people will say at your funeral when you're dead and gone? Sometimes I wonder what Jesus must think as he watches me struggle sometimes in my daily walk with him in faith. I wonder what Jesus says on those days when I'm filled with strength and joy and feel close with God and walk in the strength of faith. I hope and pray that one day Jesus will say to me, Jeffrey, my son, great is your faith. When I think about it, Nothing else really matters. How is your faith today as we gather in God's house? What makes this woman's faith so great in Jesus' eyes? What should we work at? What should we try to do so that we can have that strong faith in our daily lives? Well, I can tell you one thing, that what makes her faith is not her nationality. I mean, she is a Canaanite, and the Canaanites were people the Jews did not get, did not get along with at all. Let me be honest with you. God isn't worried about whether we're Canaanite. God isn't worried about whether we're American or Canadian or Mexican, or any other nationality in this world. Because God made every single human being on earth, and God loves each and every one of us equally, regardless of what our nationality is. So what makes this woman's faith great in Jesus' eyes? It isn't the notion that she is somehow connected with a church community. It's not that uh, she's part of First Lutheran or another Lutheran or a Catholic or a Methodist or a Presbyterian. It's not about that. In fact, Jesus implies that she isn't worthy of his help. When he says, it's not fair that I take the children's bread and feed it to the dogs. But this woman, this woman is one who's lifted up as one who is having great faith. When Jesus called the disciples to follow him, they left everything they had behind, their families, their friends, their jobs, their homes. They left that all behind, and those disciples followed Jesus. But Jesus never refers to Peter or James or John or Matthew as men of faith. More often than not, he asks these men, why are you afraid, you of little faith? So what makes this woman stand out to Jesus? I believe there are four things that makes Jesus take notice. Confession, prayer, worship, and humble persistence. 
These four things are what make faith great. Confession, prayer, worship, and humble persistence. So let me say a few things about these four. Confession is the first thing that makes her faith great. Have mercy. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. I say confession because the woman in our story cries out for mercy. I say confession because she realizes that she is not in control of her life. I say confession because she knows that only God can help her. Nothing she can ever do, nothing she can ever say can earn the right for God's help. Only, only her confession, only her confession tied to the mercy of God can bring healing for her family. Confession. Confession is a key part of what makes this woman's faith great. Prayer. Prayer is the second thing that makes her faith great. We call it prayer when we talk to Jesus and when we listen for God's answers. Now, a Sunday school teacher taught me many, many years ago that there's a reason that God gave us one mouth and two ears. That we should listen to God twice as much as we speak. Prayer is a conversation. We're real good sometimes at talking to God, but we don't always listen. And this woman is certainly not shy in bringing her troubles to Jesus. She's not afraid of the first part of talking to Jesus. And yet she also listens to Jesus. And I think this makes her prayer great. It makes it more faithful. Because she keeps the conversation going. She speaks. And she listens. Let's be honest, we don't use the gift of prayer enough. We need to speak to God. We need to tell God what's on our minds. And then we need to listen quietly. Maybe listen twice as long as we speak. And in that quiet time, expect God to speak to our hearts. Daily conversation with God, speaking and listening, prayer is what makes this woman's faith great. The third thing, the third thing that makes this woman's faith great is worship. She called on the power of God. She believed in Jesus. That's what worship is, believing in Jesus. She believed in Jesus, or at least, even in her difficult time, even when maybe she had some doubts or some questions, she at least was willing to dare to hope. She was willing to dare to hope in the possibility that Jesus really was the Lord. She was willing to dare to hope in the possibility that Jesus was the son of David, the master of the universe, and that he actually could make a difference in her situation and in the life of her daughter, her family, and her. The Bible reminds us that belief is not in things seen, but in things hoped for. Worshiping God and putting God first in our lives is key to faith. 
trusting and hoping and believing that God can actually change our reality takes a great deal of faith, and that is what makes this woman's faith great. Humble persistence. Humble persistence is the fourth and final thing that makes this woman's faith great. This woman does not take no for an answer. She doesn't ask only one time. She is bold in speaking to God, and she cries out to Jesus time and time again for his mercy. In her persistence, though, she is humble before God. And when Jesus refers to her as a dog, she doesn't say, no, I'm not. She's humble. Instead of complaining or thinking she is so great, she deserves God's attention. She humbles herself before God and continues her conversation with Jesus. Yes, Lord. But even the dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. I'm not worthy, Lord. And yet I know that even in the scraps, even if you gave me a little bit, that would be sufficient. This humble persistence is part of faith that is not easy. Especially when God's answers don't come right away. Humble persistence is part of what makes her faith great. Confession, prayer, worship, and humble persistence are four things that makes this woman's faith great, are four things that make your faith great and my faith great. Like this woman, we are called to live a life of faithfulness. So how is your faith when your time on earth ends, what will Jesus have to say to you? What do others say about your faith life when you're not around? Are you willing to confess your sin before our Lord Jesus Christ? Will you talk to Jesus daily in prayer? Will you listen to what God is trying to tell you? Do you worship God and acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord of your life? Are you humbly persistent in your prayer life and humbly persistent in your daily walk with Jesus Christ? I invite you this week to model your life after this woman, to work diligently at being the kind of person God wants you to be, the kind of person God wants me to be. I challenge you to be great in your faithfulness. Then maybe, maybe one day our Lord Jesus will say to you and will say to me, my child, great is your faith. May it be according to you as you wish. Amen. Let us boldly confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 3 of your worship bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing especially those we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant First Lutheran Church grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you at this time to share the peace of the Lord with those who are with you in worship at this time. And if you're by yourself, that is absolutely fine. I invite you to take your cell phone and text someone, peace be with you. And if uh, you don't have your cell phone with you, that's absolutely fine. I invite you when worship is finished to pick up the phone and call someone or shoot them an email and simply share God's peace with someone.
At this time, I would like to say a word about your offerings. Your offerings are your faithful response to all that God has given to you. They allow this church and the greater church to continue ministry in God's pe to God's people in our local and in our global communities. If you are unable to give as much at this time, we totally understand that. However, it is vital that those of us who can give continue to give so. Please send your offerings electronically or by mailing a check to 1337 Van Houten Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Let us pray in unison. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn, Take my life that I may be. unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you.